Hello, I'm your host, Dan Rojas. And I'm Denise Rojas, and welcome to Green Power Science. I'm standing here in front of some gigantic Fresnel lenses. Now, you may be wondering, what does a Fresnel lens have to do with green science? Or for that matter, what the heck is a Fresnel lens? Well, you're about to find out. Invented by French physicist Augustin Jean Fresnel in the early 1800s, the Fresnel lens was originally designed for lighthouses. With a large aperture and short focal length, these lenses could be manufactured out of much thinner and lighter materials. Lighthouses utilizing the revolutionary Fresnel technology were viewable from over 20 miles away. By the end of the 1800s, most lighthouses had evolved to the Fresnel lens replacing their earlier counterpart, curved glass curved glass, also known as a magnifying glass. As most kids realize, you can concentrate a whole lot of sunlight with one of these. While it's fun for kids, it's bad for a lot of bugs. I'm standing behind a four foot tall by three foot wide Fresnel lens. This Fresnel lens takes 12 square feet of sunlight and concentrates it down to a one inch area. If this Fresnel lens were made out of curved glass, it would weigh over 600 pounds and cost thousands of dollars. This lens made out of acrylic material is lightweight and cost a couple hundred bucks. You're about to see the power of concentrated sunlight. With a beam temperature exceeding 2000 degrees Fahrenheit, wood is no match for the power of a large Fresnel lens. Water boils in just a few seconds, creating pressurized steam, providing this steam engine with all the power that it needs to run. Cement is melted like butter, creating orange pools of glowy molten lava. Glass, it shatters in just a few seconds. That glass can then be melted to create some small glass sculptures. Even high temperature metals such as copper can be melted in just a few minutes. In the right hands, a large Fresnel lens can be used to create some pretty interesting wood burning artwork. It can even be used to power one of these, a Stirling engine. Stirling engines like this one are heat engines. They get all of their power strictly from heat. This large Fresnel lens is collecting sunlight, providing all the heat this engine needs to run. Now, an engine that runs off of the sun, when was this groundbreaking technology invented? Actually, engines like this one were invented long before your parents or even grandparents were born. The Stirling engine, originally referred to as the heat engine, was invented by Robert Stirling and patented in 1816. The Stirling engine is a closed cycle engine containing a gas, usually non-compressed air or more recently, hydrogen. As the gas is heated, it expands, pushing a piston providing the power stroke. Simultaneously, the gas flows around this piston to the cool side of the engine, where heat exchangers cool the gas, causing it to condense. A flywheel turns, powering a second sealed piston to recycle the gas back to the hot side, where the process is repeated over and over. This is referred to as a Stirling cycle. Due to the Stirling engine's excessive weight and lack of power compared to that of the less efficient steam engine, widespread use of the Stirling engine was limited, causing it to go into nearly a century and a half hibernation until now. This is a California Edison system being tested in Southern California. Sitting atop this array of parabolic mirrors is a very modern, very powerful Stirling engine. Each unit like this one has the capabilities of producing 25 kilowatts. So why aren't one of these on the rooftop of every home in North America? Because of a few drawbacks of solar energy. Unlike solar panels, Stirling engines eventually come to a complete stop when obscured by clouds. Also, our view of the sun is constantly changing due to the Earth's rotation, requiring need of a complex and pricey gadget called a heliostat. A heliostat, usually a slow time motor, constantly moves the entire unit at a snail's pace throughout the day, tracking the sun's movement across our sky. Currently, each unit costs over $150,000 to build. As technology in this field advances, costs should be reduced dramatically. And in the future, you may see your neighbors with their own parabolic power station. Parabolic mirrors are all around us, from this beauty mirror to large telescope mirrors. Now, a telescope mirror would be perfect for the backyard scientists with one exception. They're way too expensive. Large telescope mirrors can cost thousands of dollars. Why? Because they have to be optically perfect. 
can you say Hubble telescope? For Backyard Sun Collection, you don't need an optically perfect parabolic mirror. When we come back, I'm going to show you how to make your own parabolic mirror out of plexiglass, and it'll give me an excuse to show you how to cut a perfect circle using a table saw. You won't want to miss it.